and welcome along and welcome back to Hope Aileron. We're down at the shop today because we've got two jobs to do on our farm. We need to get a seedbed created. So we're going to get a roller and get that done. Uh, and then we actually need to get some seeds in the ground. It is early October. And uh, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of a window to get some barley into our fields. So we're going to pop into the shop here. And we're going to grab a roller first. Uh, the Dalbo Power Roll 1230 HD. Uh, that will cost us... How much to at least this? It's uh, it's not very expensive. In fact, we are now running the version 1.2 uh, update here. And you can see that we now have the costs of our hiring. So uh, base cost is 820 euros per work day is 410 and per work hour is 861 uh so yeah this is basically going to cost us uh 820 euros so uh it's going to cost us the lease um initially actually 200 uh 2091 because we are uh base leasing it for an hour and a day and have a base cost so let's do that now, what that does mean is that we're down to 606 euros overall. So we're going to need to possibly either sell some stuff or borrow some money to go forwards. Let's bring this back here and connect this up. There we go. And like so. And then we'll take these rollers up to our field and uh, get that rolled. Get a nice seed bed down. Make sure that there are no other rocks kicking about. And uh, and hopefully we'll be in a good position. Should be any rocks though, because we have already done the rock picking that we needed to do. So uh, should be all good. This will just give us a good bed on which to put our seeds in. And uh, hopefully that's going to give us a little bit of a bump in the yield. So we're up at the top end of field 20. And we're just going to bring this in here. I think this might. I don't know if this is going to uh, get rid of the lime or not. Um, but we'll have a look. See how we do. Uh, now, creating a seed bed. Not something that is... I think, I think it does have an effect, if I remember correctly. There's a little bit of a more in-depth video I want to do with preparing fields and sort of giving you guys a full overview of this. Nope, that's unfolded. Uh, lower it down. And that is basically just checking out what is the best way for us to do all this and, uh, and to create a seedbed and everything. And the effect that that has and the effect that uh, that doing all of this groundwork has on your yield. Overall, it can make quite a bit of difference. Uh, there's, a, there's a good 5% from mulching, which we haven't discussed uh, before. Uh, so you can, you can get 5% from that. You can get uh, a good boost. I think it's something like a 15% boost from uh, clearing the weeds. Uh, which, of course, is uh, is a job that we're going to want to do. Um, and there's, yeah, and fertilizing and uh, plowing and all of these things all give a good increase uh, to your yield. So there's something I want to look into there. If you're interested in that, yeah, please absolutely let me know in the comments um, because uh, that kind of, you know, letting me know about the interest that you guys have in the kind of uh, videos you'd like to see me have here on the channel is always useful. Uh, you can see the slightly different ground texture we've got here of the uh, seedbed versus the de-stoned ground uh, is a little bit better. Should do us really, really well for actually getting a good crop of barley in here for next year and we're going to do barley uh, because uh, it was actually suggested in the comments we're looking at having chickens on here and having the crop that we plant as feed for the chickens next year barley produces a slightly higher yield so uh, yeah it's going to be a good thing to have the barley 
and uh, and get that slightly higher yield out of it too. One comment that came up on one of my videos recently was the suggestion that, uh, in fact, it was on the start from scratch video that I did uh, on how to start from scratch. Uh, the question that came, or the, the point that came up was that uh, they, the person who made the comment likes to borrow money up to the hilt and buy equipment rather than leasing it. Their argument was that leasing equipment uh, loses you money. Just, you know, money goes straight, uh, straight away. There's no way of getting it back. Whereas uh, borrowing the money and... Uh, Purchasing the equipment means that you still have the equipment there and uh, and can return it and, and, and still get your money back. And I think that if you're doing... If you're going to be using a piece of equipment a lot, uh, for example, on a daily basis throughout a year, yes, I agree with that completely. Uh, if you're going to use something a lot, you're going to find very quickly that the amount that the depreciation hits on the piece of equipment versus how much you spend leasing it is very e very quickly going to even out and eventually end up in a position where the uh what the heck uh where the uh leased equipment is going to be uh cost you more than the depreciation on the piece of equipment you've bought um especially getting the loan out because you've got that on top of it as well we got a whole bunch of stones down the bottom of the field here. I don't think I don't think we missed that, but uh, and I don't think that will roll in. No. Uh, so for that instance, yes, I think if it's a piece of equipment that's going to be used a lot and on a regular basis, absolutely worth uh, getting the extra money out for the loan and buying it. If it's a piece of equipment that is going to sit there most of the year unused. So, for example, like this roller or like a combine harvester, something that you're going to use for maybe a day or two and then you're going to put it away for a long period. I recommend leasing it. You're going to spend a lot less leasing than you are actually on the depreciation. You lose somewhere between, I think it's uh, a third to half the value of the piece of equipment the moment you buy it. And it's going to take you a while to spend that much on it leasing it. So, uh, yeah, I think I think very much it depends on how long you're looking at using a piece of equipment for. And, uh, and yeah, how much during that time you're actually going to be using it. And if it turns out that it's cheaper to lease it, go lease it. If it turns out you're going to be using it a lot, it's worth borrowing that cash and uh, and buying it because in the long run you'll save the money now for most of the field i've kept the roller down what i'm actually going to do here <coughs> is do now for most of the field i've kept the roller down what i'm actually going to do here is go along this headland here and then pick the roller up at the end so that we can come back to this far end and then go up the side of the field and go and do the top end headland. Um, slightly more realistic to be doing the headlands this way, I think. And we're going to get everything covered and make a nice headland seed bed at the same time. It's worked really well on, the, uh, on this field, these rollers. And you can see it's actually adjusting as we go over the bumpier bits of this field, uh, especially that bottom bit. Look at how uneven the bottom bit of this field is. Right, let's pick this up. And then we're gonna wait till there's no traffic. Yep, that's all good. Because we have no lights on this. We'll just go along the edge of the road here. And then we can come into this bottom corner and just finish off here. Yeah, there we go. And bring it round. Oh, we have got 2CV coming up behind us. And it looks like my turn was a little too much. Fortunately, this corner uh, is the least square corner we have on the field. So we can just back this up and bring ourselves in from this point here. So down you go. 
around we go. And we want to get it to come around and into this corner. Like so. Bring it back out. And then line up to the edge of the field. Make sure that we get as much seed bed as we possibly can. And it's pretty much an exact fit. I'm happy with that. And we're coming up to the top end of the field, right where we started. Creating a nice seed bed the whole way across. Perfect. Let's bring this up to this corner. All right. Uh, lift it up. Roll it off the field quickly. And then we can fold it in as well. And then we can head down to the bottom and get the other field done as well. I want to put a single crop in across everything on this farm. Uh, we've not got a massive farm. And so as a result, we end up in this position where we are better off with a single crop like this. And across the road, there we are. And we're going to be sort of making money throughout the year from uh, A, our greenhouse, and B, uh, our chickens eventually. This is a weird shaped field. I was hoping this was going to be our straight edge, but it's not. So the bottom end is, but I'm looking at going sort of uh, across it like this. So we'll create a seed bed up here like so. And then we'll have to come in and do the extra bits afterwards. You can see the difference is over here go over you can see this green that we're creating of a of a better seed bed to get all of our crops in and this will just work out overall better for us uh in getting what we want and what we need from these fields so let's bring this round and yeah we will go in at this point Having a nice straight uh, run would have been useful, but uh, there's not much I can do about it. It looks like it's only going to be a single worth of width that we need to go back and sort. So we can do that. And then bring this down here. Bring it around. And you can see, yeah, this is, this is going to make a difference. This is going to give us a much better start for the barley for next year. Much better than we, uh, we have currently for our field and uh, and should make a difference to us in what we get out of it coming up to this little kick out at the end of this field and i think the width on this might actually reach yeah it's going to because we're going to go across the field from this corner so i'll bring this around here and then we'll just back it up into the corner to make sure the seed bed gets all the way to this end like so and then we can go over that bit we started on uh, in the first place and just go and do the head and actually finish off in a really good space on our field uh, now creating as I saying before creating this seedbed is going to make quite a bit of a difference hopefully to our yield uh, we should get a, a slightly better yield out of both of these fields as a result uh we're gonna put barley in both of them so we're gonna get a cedar up next and make sure that uh, that is all doing okay we're probably gonna get an older cedar and lease an older cedar uh, we're gonna have to i think borrow a little bit of money to do that unfortunately but we should be able to return some of that in a bit we're gonna we're still getting stuff we're still getting lettuce out of our greenhouse so we'll have some of that to sell in the near future and even things up and once we've got this in the only thing we really have to worry about is getting rid of any weeds that crop up on our fields uh, and getting them fertilized i think it might be a good idea to do some solid fertilization on these fields i don't know if 
we can put care wheels on this tractor. So that will be something else to discover when we get uh, back down to the shop. Let's bring this over to here. We'll then lift it up and fold it up and we can have a quick look at our greenhouse while that's folding in. Now, version uh, 1.2 does make a change to the pallets. Our cabbage, uh, sorry, our lettuce pallets now are only 200 litres here. Now, if we pick this up, because we can still pick this up though, you can see that there is space for these pallets to expand and increase. So lots of people having issues where they've got stacked pallets and they've updated and they've got that. That is because these pallets will actually increase uh, over time and you will uh, you can get more in here up to a thousand liters. So uh, we've got five levels of lettuce that's going to come onto here. And at the moment, you can see in our production cycle, we at the moment have 161 uh, lettuce. Now it's two water to every lettuce versus uh, two, uh, yeah, one water to two strawberries and one water to one tomato. So it's the same production rate as before and we can now see cycles per month as well is another update we've had by uh, 2.1. Tomatoes and strawberries actually have the same number of cycles, whereas uh, the lettuce only it has a lot less, has about half the cycles. So uh, very interesting. Looks like uh, strawberries uh, are going to be producing a lot quicker now than uh, the other fruits in here. So we may have to turn the strawberries on and see how that does. Um, because if they're doing that many cycles and producing twice as much stuff, Actually, I do want to turn the other ones on. We'll sell everything in here at the moment. And we'll just see how quickly. But I think strawberries are going to be the crop to do. Because if it produces twice as much in the same time for half the ingredients, that's going to be a big change. Uh, let's head back down to the shop. Get rid of this roller and see if we can get something to plant some barley. And back down the shop, we can return these rollers over here. Just pull them into the box. And we want to put the tractor in here as well. Because I want to see if we can put some care tyres on it. So here, let's uh, return that. What I'd quite like to see is at the moment, you're, you've not got anything for bringing this back to the shop and returning it here. I'd love to see uh, the ability to return something here and get just a little bit of cash back. Almost like a deposit uh, would be quite good. Uh, give some incentive for bringing a piece of equipment back to the shop uh, would be really nice. Uh, our Vultra is in okay condition. Repair costs and everything is uh, a little bit high at the moment. Now, this, I think, does have some narrow tyres. Yeah, so we can put narrow tyres on this. Uh, very, very doable. We could actually also get a little bit of traction if we put some twin wheels on it while we're seeding. Um, but that is going to make things a little bit wide and also is going to cost us money we don't have at the moment. So we can get, uh, we can avoid destroying our crops with this tractor when we are doing some fertilizing later on. So that is all good. Um, as I said, when I got this, this is a really good all round tractor. Very, very pleased with this. All right, let's go over here to the shop. And in here now, we need to get a cedar. So our choices are base game stuff. We've got the Nordstein. Uh, this is... But this comes with a built-in. This is the thing. All these low price ones here, they all come with a built-in uh, power harrow. And we won't, don't need that. We've got a good seed base and everything set up very nicely. So that gives us kind of two options here. Now... The D840, that is a 4 meter cedar versus D830, which is 3 meter. Uh, I'd quite like to get the uh, D840 to lease this. Uh, we don't have enough money. I think we're going to have to borrow 5,000 for that then. So we'll head into the bank and borrow 5,000. So we're up to 230,000 on our loan. That means we've only borrowed 30,000 to get our farm set up, which is really good. 
Uh, I'm quite happy with that. Into the cedars, and yeah. Now, this is a wheel setup is standard or wide. It doesn't cost anything extra to put the wides on it, but I'm going to not do that at the moment. Now, going across us 816. Yes, please. So we were only 200 short. But that's slightly annoying. But we do have to buy some seeds. Now, the big bag seeds are cheaper. Uh, but we do not have anything that uh, we can use to load them up. So we're going to, and keeping the realism, we're going to have to do uh, a pallet of seeds. So that is, actually, that's about as much, I think, as our cedar holds anyway. And now this is a problem we have at the moment. We don't have any front loader tools or any setup like that. Uh, how much does this cedar take? Let's have a quick look. Uh, it's under leased items. Uh, this takes 1,000 litres. So, yeah, it's going to leave us with 50 litres of seed. How far this is going to go for doing barley, I don't know. And I think as a result, we will probably do our smaller field first. Uh, and then if we need to, it might be a case uh, that we have to get something to fill this up better. There we go. Fill that up. Get all of those bags in like so that is all good it's not got any external cover yet closing so we'll do that thousand liters and we want the barley let's uh let's get this back up to our farm and see um see if we can get some in and see how far this goes um because that is going to be the important thing with these seeds how many more pallets do we need and how are we going to load them into our truck at the moment, I'm keeping my eye out for a forklift or a, well, a forklift or uh, a skid steer or something like that that we can use around our farm. Our tractor covers pretty much everything that we want to do. Our a forklift is, or, or skid steer is going to give us a good position as far as moving pallets and things around our yard downside to both of those is we could very easily end up with a situation where uh, we can't get stuff back from the shop and that's that's the bit i'm gonna have to watch out for looks like we're gonna be doing two headlands with this uh, which is fine so the first one will have quite a bit of overlap and the second one will have a lot less. We want to have a little bit of overlap here. Basically put the wheel of the cedar into the spot. And yeah. Oh. Yeah, it seems that missed a spot. Which is a little bit annoying. I don't know why those two spots missed. Maybe... Ah, there we go. Can you see that? That still has stubble on it. So we missed those two spots with the plow. That's why those haven't seeded. Right. Bring this round. And in. Yeah. So that's not a case of me not going wide enough. That's a case of uh, we missed a couple of bits with the plow. And so they can't do it. I'm guessing... Something similar might be the case with that end spot as well. And then I'm just going to bring our cedar down the side here. Be a little bit of double seeding on this headland, but that does tend to happen on the headlands a bit. I'm going to bring it off this bit here. Very nice seed bed that we're putting this barley into. I'm very happy about that. And I did just double check that we were actually putting barley in here. And I'll go to the map in a moment and uh, and just check that again. But we need to, yeah, need to make sure it's the right crop going into here because the last thing I want is uh, is to seed an entire field with the wrong thing. One of the nice things about uh, FS22 is you can't seed the wrong crop if it's the wrong time of year. So let's just have a look. What have we got going into here? We have barley going into here, so that's good. Exactly what we want. Uh, 
and uh, and we only used four percent of the seed on this first bit of the field so that's good news as well we're about halfway through the field now i think and uh we've only used about eight, uh 20 percent of the seed so that is uh is looking pretty good hoping i wasn't going to end up with too much space between the rows there but we seem to be good and uh yeah i'm quite happy with that uh it's uh, it's going well the seed bed is taking it very nicely and we are uh looking at having plenty of seed left over from this field let's just back that up a little bit but also massively off yeah there we go back it up drop it down and uh, and yeah we're we're looking fairly good at the moment we're sitting pretty uh it's not going to cost us much more to get both these fields done so uh, i'm very happy with that it's about quarter to four in the afternoon in game though so we've still got quite a way to go uh, before both these fields are seeded uh, it may be a case of we get this one seeded today and the other one seeded next game day uh, not a huge problem. It will cost us a bit more to have this seed around a bit longer, but uh, I don't think that's a huge issue. Uh, we've got a little bit of money kicking about at the moment, thanks to the extra 5,000 we took, uh, and we should have plenty of seeds. Our biggest problem is do we go back to the shop with the truck or with the tractor to get more seeds? Because at some point, we're going to need more seeds from that shop and i'm just not convinced that uh taking our cedar is the way to go with that this is a very bumpy bit of field uh so yeah we'll see how we do and we'll see what the time is when we uh, finish seeding this field so we've reached the corner of the field and got all the headland done there's about a wit's worth available in this corner for our cedar i think so what we're gonna do is we're now gonna put our wheels along the edge here get this headland done uh, go back up this side when we we come back the other way and then head uh, around and do the top side of this uh, it is coming up to 5 p.m uh, and we do have more time and the, the sun is setting so what i'm gonna do is uh, get this field planted we're going to hold on to the cedar for today and we're going to go and do uh, we're going to go and see if we've got any pallets to sell because this is the thing we tend to be relying a little bit daily income wise on having some pallets to sell has version uh, two, uh, 1.2 caused that to change is that going to be a bit of a, a problem for us uh, we're going to find out. We've got 400 litres, or we had 400 litres of lettuce. Uh, I'm now intrigued to see if we have more than that and see if we've got anything else on there. Can't really see the pallets from here. So uh, we'll find out when we finish this field. Uh, it has gone in well. We are at 61% of our full cedar and we know that one pallet can do about a cedar's worth i'm not sure it's the cheaper op cheapest option i think the big bags might be the cheapest option as i said at the time uh, there we go yep that is fine so we'll go around this headland here now and that will give us a nice finishing touch to this and then we've just got the headland around the top to do but yeah, we need, a, we need a good daily income to keep this farm going uh, really well. And I think it's going to be tough to do without those pallets coming in on a daily basis. Uh, I do want to get the chickens. But it may be a springtime thing to do the chickens. Uh, we might have to accelerate through the winter and go from there. The alternative is that we get some more contracts done if we can find some contracts to get done and do them over the winter uh, then that is going to give us a good income 
Yeah, there are no other pallets there. I think we should remove those pallets and see what happens. Maybe sell those 400 litres of lettuce to clear things out. Or maybe it's run out of water. Now, that is the other pop possibility. So, we need to really deal with the greenhouses before we do any more seeding. Especially as it is now 20 past 5. Oh, and some bumpy bits in this field. Let's see if we can't... Yeah, you see, that lifts it up too much. That's going to be a tough bit to get seeded, I think. But, there we go. Right, what I'm going to do is just back onto that little bit there. See if we can uh, cover over the seeds. But yeah, it's, it's raised up a little bit by us placing our shed so close. So that is the problem with this. And it just raises things up along that edge a little bit. There we go. There we are. Right, let's turn that off. Back it up. And we've still got nearly 60% of our initial seeds left. So that is very good news. Uh, a second pallet is, uh, is going to go away. But I think it might take a while. Yeah, there's nothing out there. What's going on in here? So production, we've got water. We've got 37 litres of tomatoes, 126 litres of strawberries, and 189 litres of lettuce. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to remove these pallets from here and just put these in our truck so that they're out of the way. But it looks like everything is, uh, is kind of producing at a slower rate, maybe, than it was before. And I'll strap those down. And I think I'll go and deliver them uh, after the end of this to uh, to the shop. But yeah, that's being a little bit funny. Still plenty of water in here. So I'm not worried about the water. Um, it's just whether we actually uh, are going to get crops out of here anytime soon. I think we'll see what happens overnight. But that is a pretty good setup for us for now. We have one field seeded. We've got the other one to do next time. Uh, and things that are going well on the farm. I'm going to leave this here. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell and I will see you next time. Goodbye.